Hey guys, let's talk about how to get a federal job with no experience. If working in a federal government job is something that appeals to you, but let's say you have no experience, well, there are still a few options that you have. And before we get started, understand that many people who do not think they have experience actually do have some experience. A lot of people have some type of experience, whether it is from volunteering at a school, a church, or in your local community. Also, many people have held a minimum wage job or they have worked part-time jobs in which they've conducted administrative tasks and they have demonstrated problem solving while they were working. When you upload your resume onto usajobs.gov, both paid and unpaid experience counts towards meeting the qualifications section in the job announcement. In fact, last year, I helped an individual who only had volunteer experience enter the government as a GS-11. This person never held a paying job, but still had multiple years of experience. Regardless of the type of work or activity you were doing, it can be counted as experience. Do not sell yourself short. Many times you can take this type of experience and tailor a resume that could easily qualify you for a government job. Okay, now, if you really don't have any experience, then this is what you can do. First, you can graduate from an educational institution or a certification program. This could be at a university or your local college. If you do this, then you would qualify for the recent graduate program, which is an option in usajobs.gov. This is for people who have graduated with either a degree or a certification in the past two years. And this timeline is extended to six years for veterans. Upon hiring, there more than likely will be a mentorship program provided to you. And you will have the opportunity to create an individual development plan along with taking various training courses multiple times throughout the year. Also, usually there is a probationary period for the first year or two. Think of this as the government department holding your hand as you slowly start to increase your proficiency in the position. Mistakes are generally expected, and the idea is to give you the knowledge and experience to start your government career. If you are interested in this program, I will drop a link below. But I understand school isn't for everyone, and if you don't want to take on the extra debt, I can't say I blame you. So what else can you do? Number two is that you can look on usajobs.gov for a clerk position or a hotline responder position. This is a pretty rough option because these positions are generally locked in at the GS2 level. But as long as you have graduated high school or its equivalent, which I'm assuming is a GED, then you can qualify for a job solely on education with zero experience required. This is something that you can quite easily create a filter on usajobs.gov for, and then there will be an automated email sent to you whenever these type of positions open up in your area. Now, before you commit yourself to this option, you have to understand that starting off as a GS2 is starting pretty much at the bottom rung of the ladder, and it will take years to get to a level that will be on par with the national average salary. As an example, this is the average salary for a GS2 in Tampa, Florida. It's only 28,000 a year. So it's something to think about. Number three is to look for a state government job instead of a federal government job. There are various state or even city government jobs that you can apply to with no experience. And these jobs typically will involve physical labor. You can use these types of jobs as a stepping stone to a future federal government job by using the time to build up different experiences. If you do a quick Google search of your city, county, or state government, you can find a list of job positions that you should be able to filter through and apply. Okay, so let's say none of these ways I've mentioned so far interest you, but you still have the desire to work for the federal government. You do have another option, and that is to enlist in the military. Now, believe me, I understand a lot of people simply do not want to do this, or maybe there's an underlying health condition that's preventing you from joining the military. But if you are able to join, then this is something that you should at least consider. It doesn't matter what branch you decide, whether it's Army, Navy, Marines, Air Force, or Coast Guard. If you enlist for a few years, you will pick up a lot of different experiences 
And on top of that, you will be eligible for the veteran's preference when applying to federal government jobs on usajobs.gov. There's also an option where you can join the National Guard and find federal government jobs at the same time. There are many job listings that require National Guard membership to even be eligible to apply. No matter what path you decide to take, always keep in mind that there are no guarantees with the federal government hiring process or usajobs.gov. So prepare for some potential disappointment in the beginning. But if you seriously want to get in, as long as you are persistent and keep applying, you will eventually find your way in. In my experience, I did not start thinking about a federal government job until I had over 10 years in the Army. And at that point, I started to conduct a lot of research on how I could position myself in a way that would make me a more competitive candidate. This resulted in me attaining a graduate degree, a certification, and a few different online courses to brush up on some marketable skills. Well, that pretty much wraps up the video on federal jobs with no experience. If you have any questions, comments, or you feel like I missed something, please leave that down below. You can always send me an email if you like also. If you like this video, please click that like button and click subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.